right, so some people don't like uh, hand washing, but two things. Number one, this is a silver car. It doesn't show any light scratches at all. And it always damn near looks new. I, people keep asking me, they were like, yo, is this car new? And they keep asking what year this car is because I keep this car in such good condition that uh, it always looks new. And that's part of the reason why at this point I can't sell it. I'm just gonna keep it. It's like, I don't even care what they're willing to offer for it. It's like when I'm in traffic and when I'm like go to the parking lot, like when I go to the store, it's like I have like so many people asking about this car and look at like the wheels specifically. They're like, oh yeah, wow, where'd you get those wheels? Did you add those? I'm like, no, they came with the car. So bottom line is I need new wheels and tires because even right now my tire pressure monitoring system was saying that one of my uh, tires is low. So I got to go to the tire store. Um, and have them uh, take a look and see, because I think there's a nail in it, because I saw a nail. But um, the thing about it is um, these tires and these wheels, or specifically these wheels, they, um, I just had them balanced because my balance was way off a couple of days ago and it was, it was shaking and now it rides perfectly smooth. So I'm gonna buy a new set of wheels and tires and I'm gonna keep that exact same look because that look, no other truck has that look except Jeep. And that was a good thing that they did. They had like, um, you know, it's not really bespoke, but at least it's very, uh, nobody else has it. It's just, you know, original, I suppose. So as far as a project, I'm gonna get new wheels and tires. I was looking on eBay. That same exact design with new tires is about $2,000. And I'm also going to get a Borla exhaust system. And I know I always said, yeah, I refuse to mod my car, but the thing about it is, if I have to replace a muffler for whatever reason, I might as well just mod the whole thing because Chrysler overcharges on everything. They said if I wanted a new muffler, they said it was like $4,000 and they have to do the whole thing. And I was like, I could get a fucking Borla attack for less than $2,000. I could get it for about 1,700. So why the fuck would I pay you 4,000? It doesn't make sense. But yeah, I keep this car new. Everybody's like, oh yeah, I would never take my car to the car wash. Yeah, well, you stand right there and you keep washing that shit by hand and I'll keep doing what I'm doing and my shit still look new because it's silver. How about that? See? Nice and clean, except for that bottom guard down there. I, I don't know why, but that collects a lot of dust for some reason. I have no idea, but uh, I'm sure they'll rectify it. Yeah, they'll rectify it. But uh, so far, so good. And nice and clean, what's up? Nice and clean. And this, that S-Class right there, that's the old model W222. Very nice. But when you got a black car, you gotta wash these fucking things so, so often. It's like, you shouldn't have to wash a car that much. But you do. You know, it is what it is. So there, there you go. Nice and clean now. So basically, I, I let the car get kind of dirty. So basically, they vacuum it and then they did the exterior wash and then they did the armor all on the tires and all that. And it's only $23. It's like if I went to the car vacuum, I would have to go through all the bullshit of vacuuming the car. And uh, that would have been like five, six, ten dollars or something like that. Well, no, it wouldn't have been that much. It would have been about five dollars because they charge a lot for the vacuum. So I was like, yeah, there's no point in me doing that. Just let them do it and they get it nice and spotless. And as you can see, you don't see any scratches whatsoever because of the paint. This is not one of those regular paints. This is that pearl coated, uh, like that, that nanotech paint that they use. And the thing about it is I, I see no, if you look at it very close, you see no micro scratches except for the front of the car where the rocks and shit be jumping up and chipping. And I know some people get those clear coats and bras and all that shit. But me personally, it's like, I, I just, I never really thought to do that. Maybe on the next car, I'll consider doing something like that. But it's like, um, at this point, this car is what, this car's got 90,000 miles very soon. By the end of the summer, I'll have 90,000 miles on this car. Does this look like a car that has 90,000 miles? No, of course not, because I took care of it. Even the interior. The only bad part about the interior is the driver's seat, because I use it every, every single day. The rest of the car is damn near spotless, you know? And if you do like a little shampoo or a little detail, it'd be even better. You guys got the play mode.
Uh, Cadillac Lyric 600 E4. I believe that means that this is all wheel drive and it's black. I'm absolutely not doing anything with no black car. It's what it's you can even see shit's already got smudges and stuff. It's like I can't do that. Mine is supposed to be silver, and I see this one also doesn't have the moonroof option. So, what is this? It's got the black on black, so the interior is black, exterior is black. Let's see, this is, uh, okay, so this is uh, total price, total options is $4,520. So it has uh, electric all wheel drive. That's uh, the all wheel drive system is, oh, there it is. I got a focus lock. So it's thirty-five hundred dollars for the all-wheel drive system, six twenty-five for black paint, three ninety-five for floor liner, and that's four thousand five hundred twenty dollars. So the price is sixty-seven to ten, sixty-seven to ten. So they, you know, and that's the thing. Like some people, are like, oh yeah, well, why don't you just pick something else? The problem is Cadillac. Basically, they're the only people making a car this big. That's a freaking electric car. It's like the Tesla Model Y is smaller, the Tesla Model Three is smaller, the Hyundai Ioniq Five is smaller, the EQS is smaller, the EQE is even smaller than the EQS. The BMW iX is actually the only other thing I'd consider. The problem is it's fucking ugly. Like BMW, I don't like this styling at all. I don't really, this is really not much of a choice. And some people are like, oh yeah, I don't like the way it looks. It looks boxy. I like the fucking boxy look. It's just like that. Just like the X-T5. And, and the thing about it is I actually like the X-T5. It's funny that they have two of these together. I actually like the X-T5 more because it has a bigger roof. Like you could sit, I could sit straight up in this thing because I'm six foot six. So it's easier for me to sit straight up in it than it is for me to sit straight up in the Lyric. I have to lean back more. But, um... I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad they put both of these together. I think both of those have the stellar black paint. I'm back up, I'm gonna take a picture of it. It's nice and black, but I'm I'm not doing no black cars because it's too much fucking maintenance. It's like, I, I don't, like when I see people with black cars and they got a, and I had that black Chrysler 300 SRT. When I see people with black cars and they got to fucking wipe that shit down every five minutes, it's like, that's annoying. That's really, really annoying. This has the uh, Primacy All Seasons. What is this? R20, is this a 265 50 R20 Michelin? Yeah, see, Cadillac put Michelin on all, it, on all their cars. It's like, me personally, I don't need Michelins because once these tires burn away, I just get me some Hankook Ventus or something like that. Because all I'm interested in is the all-wheel drive aspect. You know, how it handles during the uh, s uh, winter, you know? You know, I'm not looking for no race car. If I wanted a race car, I'd still be fucking with Chrysler. It's like, I'm done with them motherfuckers. <laughs> I am done. Yeah. Then there's that X-T4, which the X-T4, they've redesigned. So uh, now they've got a new interior for the X-T4. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah so um, just sitting in here. Yeah, just to get another feel for it. All of these things come with the massage heated cooling system. In fact, what I've noticed is they're making the new Cadillacs, they're making all of them look pretty much just like this. They're putting this uh, display here. They're all going to have their seat controls right there and everything. So I think that's, uh, that's a pretty good direction. This does not have Super Cruise. Super Cruise, you would have seen it in the black bar right there. So this is not fully loaded because that Super Cruise system, that's absolutely worth having. This does not have it. Yeah. Yeah, I would honestly say that these cars, this car is definitely, I would say, considering 
that they've been getting away with charging top dollar for those XT5s. I would say this is this is easily worth 70000 Easily. Especially considering um, what it's offering as far, you know, as the uh, auto driving system and everything. And uh, so I'm going to end up getting that uh, $7,500 tax credit. And on top of that, I'm going to get the uh, rebate from GM and everything, so... Yeah, this is, I would say this is definitely, there's nothing else. There's there's no other options. It's like, yeah, the BMW iX, I like it. But the thing about it is that thing is ugly and BMWs do not age well. They they look terrible when they, when they're not, when, unless they're new. You know, as soon as they're new, they're okay. But eventually those things look terrible. They just don't age well at all. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is black on black. This is, I think this is called the Noir interior, N-O-I-R. But see, my thing is, it's like, I have to have my, in fact, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, this has, no, yeah, this has the power window shade, but it doesn't have the openable window. See, that's something I have a problem with Tesla for. It's like Tesla doesn't give you the shade and they only give you a heavily tinted window. I have a problem with that. I have a serious problem with that. I think they should give you both. And even if they can't give you the openable window, they should at least give you the shade. I think, you know. And as you can see, they have light bars right here. That light bar is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? So that's basically telling you how much charge you have. And when the light bar lights all the way up across, that tells you the car is fully charged. So yeah, that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, it's nice. It's, uh, it's really, really nice. I just wish they'd hurry up and build mine. Okay, I haven't seen one of these in a while. This guy's from Arizona. He doesn't seem to be able to drive straight either. This guy's breaking all kinds of laws. Look at that guy. That guy right there. That's a Mopar up in here. What is this guy? Look at that guy. Look at this guy right here making all that noise. Let's catch that guy. If I can get past these freaking slow ass cars, let's catch that guy. This guy's making all that noise. Let's catch this guy. I don't know if I can catch this guy because these, these people drive it slow. Come on, guys, let's go. Fucking maximum. Yeah. Uh-oh. This guy's making a lot of noise. You're not supposed to be making all that noise. It's the 4th of July. All that damn noise. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Hey. Noise. Yo. What what exhaust is that? Is that Borla or Corsa? What you mean? What exhaust? Oh, you don't know. <laughs> okay, you're not very helpful. Ah, uh, anyway. All right. Yeah, I, got, I want to get an exhaust, but I don't know which one I want to get. It's only mid-pipes. Mid-pipes? Yeah. All right. Let's take I got all that noise. Well, you can see that the uh, gas is 395, so as you can see, Bidenomics is working really well. But this is what happens when you uh, put these goddamn fucking Democrats in office. You get Bidenomics right there. Uh-huh. That's exactly what happens. Oh, these two guys, these two guys are angry at each other. I think, I don't know, I think he got in front of them or something and, and this guy was yelling at him or some shit. I don't know. 
and his wife's over here his wife's over here looking and she's like she looks at us like he's i don't know what it is i don't know if they're gonna have any words that's why i pulled my phone out because i figured okay if they're gonna start some shit i'm gonna put them both on youtube you know i don't know but we'll, we'll see what happens we'll see what happens because I'm, I'm gonna get me like another 20 bucks uh, if they're giving each other hard looks and shit you better not mess with this guy he drives a ram truck All right, I guess nothing's gonna happen. Look at this shit, 390 fucking five. It might as well be $4. This is bullshit, fucking Bidenomics. Bidenomics my ass. Look at this. I was hoping for a little bit of, uh, you know, road rage, but I guess I'm not going to get it, so, oh well. You know it's really, really fucked up? Coming to the Department of Motor Vehicles in New York City. How the fuck do you park and get a ticket when you're here to fight a ticket? That's like a goddamn shame. What the fuck? Oh, look at this guy. So this guy just got this Yaris, and it's a brand new. Uh, it's a brand new tag. So from Florida, it looks like it's a brand new tag, though. Oh, so he's leaving. <laughs> oh, nice knowing you. I was uh, just at Cadillac looking at uh, some of the luxury packages that came in, even though my Sport 3 is nowhere to be found. This is that new Maserati MC20. This is uh, pretty nice in person. It's still just a damn Maserati. That's a nice back, look at that. That's a really nice back. So they integrated the lights into the carbon fiber. That's really nice. So my guess is the person who bought this probably put a couple of thousand miles on the shit and then got rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice, but it's like more whatever. <laughs> I still think the, G the Maserati GT, I like that more. It's nice, though. All right, so here's the story. While I'm waiting for one of my videos to clear monetization, which is part of the reason why I'm a little bit slower making uploads because YouTube, they have artificial intelligence scanning through your videos, right? And then what they do is they'll demonetize the video and then you have to force them to manually review a video, right? So what ends up happening is it takes two or three days for them to fully uh, check the videos and monetize them. And what I've noticed is they're slow on weekends. So I posted a video on Thursday. It hasn't cleared monetization yet. So I'm still waiting for it on Saturday morning. It's a pain in the ass, honestly. And it slows you down as far as content creation goes. Because I'm not going to post my videos if they're not going to benefit from every single view. So I don't work for free. But after the video clears monetization, that's when I'll post it. So in the meantime, what I figured I'd do is talk about this story right here, which is also in line with what I do. Nearly half of Warren Buffett's dividend income comes from just three stocks. So it says uh, the key points, Warren Buffett has overseen almost a 4,200,000% return on his company Berkshire Hathaway A class shares. The Oracle of Omaha's company is on pace to collect around $6 billion in dividend income this year. Three key Buffett stocks are responsible for close to half of the dividend income Berkshire receives. Uh, the Oracle of Omaha's company stands to collect an aggregate of $2.75 billion in yearly income from three top holdings. So, yeah, they go on and on to talk about Berkshire Hathaway A. 
Now, as you know, I own Berkshire Hathaway B. Berkshire Hathaway A, you would have had to buy that in the 1990s to be able to afford it because it was like $9,000 um, when it was around its cheapest. Like, you would have had to have bought this a long time ago and you would have had to pay top dollar for it and then had faith that it would someday be worth a lot of money. And I would I would imagine that anybody who burnt Berkshire Hathaway A back in the 90s, I would imagine they're like 100 years old by now or close to it. So um, Buffett's secret to success is no secret at all. For decades, he's discussed how he qualifies his investments and laid out other intangible factors that may work into his investment process. So uh, let's see. Okay, they go on and on. I'll just post the uh, link to the story. You can read it yourself. So this first one he's talking about here is Occidental Petroleum. And that gives him $961 million in annual dividend income. Now, for a long time, I focused on oil stock in general. Exxon, Sunoco, uh, Valero, Occidental, any of these big oil stocks, like these big gas companies that are linked to oil stocks that you know of, those are definitely worth putting money into if you're trying to collect dividends or build a dividend-paying portfolio. And you have to remember, you're not going to build this overnight. It's going to take you a while of investing small amounts of money into these stocks in order to get them to a point where you'll be able to collect a large dividend every single year. Now, the key is when you get those dividend payments, not to take that money and waste it on something. Like that's what most people do. They they waste a lot of money and then they wonder why they're always broke or they wonder why they're living paycheck to paycheck. What you have to do is you got to take those dividends and reinvest them into other stocks that pay dividends. So, by doing what's called dividend reinvestment, you can build your portfolio based on money that you have coming in that's basically ghost income or shadow income, whatever you want to call it. And I have basically figured out that banks, oil, and at this point, tech companies that pay dividends are the best bet. I'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm not, I'm not going to make this too long because, you know, there's no point in going too long over the broad strokes. But Bank of America is his uh, second largest, highest annual annual dividend income. Now, keep in mind, he has a bunch of stocks that pay dividends. He even owns Sirius XM Radio. And uh, he owns a lot of stocks that pay income. But uh, the top three, this is number two, Bank of America. So as I've pointed out, most of the banks pay a high dividend. And the banks, as far as I'm concerned, are too big to fail. Unlike in 2008, where the banks gambled heavily on uh, one of those things, um, mortgages or repackaged mortgage, this is not the same thing that we're looking at now. Uh, 2008, a lot of the banks went under because they were uh, gambling on packaged mortgages, right? So Washington Mutual was one of those. Now, if you look at today's mortgage market, it's actually, oddly enough, it's a lot more stable. And the reason why is because most mortgages now are sold on fixed 30-year rates. And then most of those people, especially if they bought their home during the COVID era, I, I, I guess I would like to say COVID's over, but if they bought their home then, they got their rates probably under a 5%. So usually I would say that most of those people either already had a house and refinanced or they were able to buy their house around between a 3% and a 5%. Some people paid more and they got uh, points off and they got a lower than a 3%. But uh, anybody who bought their house on a 3% or less those people are beating the price of inflation to the point where their house is probably their main asset at this point. It's no longer a liability. It's really an asset. Yes, they still have to pay the mortgage, but for the most part, 
if they had to go and find an apartment, the apartment would be more expensive than what they have. If they had to go and find another house, it would be more expensive than what they had. So the reality is most people, most people are, uh, who are homeowners, they have a mortgage lower than 3%. And the point of that is the banks mostly aren't gambling on these mortgages anymore. The small banks are, but the large banks aren't. So when you talk about Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Capital One, Capital One is not even in mortgages anymore. Uh, but when you're talking about these big, big, big banks, they're not playing around with these mortgages anymore. They're leaving that up to the smaller banks to do, and the smaller banks are assuming ridiculous amounts of risk. And uh, if the small banks go under, nobody really cares, you know, or I mean, it's not a national epidemic of bank failure if the small banks go under. But for the most part, these mortgages are so stable now that you really don't have to worry about the banks going under. Now, yes, the stock values may decline, like Wells Fargo and uh, some of the other city. Yeah, their stock values may fluctuate. But for the most part, you don't have to worry about them going under. They're not too big to fail at this point. So the banks, like Bank of America, very good place to park your money. Banks, enter, banks and energy are a very, very good place to park your money, especially if they're paying dividends. I'll show you the dividend stock list that I put together of uh, stocks that I own. I'll show you that later. Uh, and then the third, Apple. Now, Apple, as you know... Just like uh, Microsoft, just like Google and Amazon, those are – well, first of all, Apple's the number one company in the world. It's the number one corporation. So all those Samsung haters, all those people who, who, oh, yeah, well, Apple sucks and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, Apple's number one on the earth, on the planet Earth. Apple is number one. Apple is going to be the first four trillion dollar company. Apple is currently worth more than three trillion dollars, but they're going to be the first four trillion dollar company. And you know what's so funny about Apple? Every other corporation wants to be like Apple. So they're all doing, they, they sit back, they watch and they see what Apple's doing. And they're like, yeah, we want to do that. Because if Apple's doing it, it must, it must make sense. Oh, but Apple sucks and they make crappy products and we don't like Apple because everything's so expensive. And blah, 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 blah. Apple is the f going to be the first $4 trillion company. Apple is currently $3 trillion, but it's going to be the first $4 trillion company. So obviously they're doing something right. Now, most wealth and rich people, they knew Apple was rising and they bet on Apple and they put their money at Apple. They knew, first of all, they knew it paid a dividend. So they're like, yeah, we want to get in on that dividend. But uh, rich people have been parking their money at Apple for a while. And then on top of that, I kind of mentioned this a while ago, Apple is changing the way corporations do business. For example, Apple launched Apple Card using Goldman Sachs to back it. They just made the technology. And they had Goldman Sachs to back the Apple Card, which is a credit card. And that allows people to buy their expensive products, obviously, as well as other things. But on top of that, Apple took the next logical step and started a savings account. And I have that savings account. I also have Apple Card, obviously. So Apple, in a way, is slowly turning itself into a bank. Now, I argue that the next logical thing that they should do is they should start a trading program for stock trading, ETF trading. Now, if Robinhood could do it, and Rob Robinhood's a shitty-ass trading program. I'll just say it like that. Uh, you have Robinhood, you have Coinbase. Coinbase trades in cryptocurrency mostly, which is basically junk. If they could do it, Apple could easily do it. Now, I would expect that Apple probably wouldn't do it themselves. They would probably use an intermediary just like they did with uh, Apple Card. They'd probably use like Goldman Sachs to do it. But considering right now, 
Charles Schwab is out there. You got Goldman Sachs out there. My thinking is they should make a partnership with either Charles Schwab or Goldman Sachs, and they could do Apple Trades. They could call it Apple Trades. I don't know. If they did that, they already have a stock app built into the phones and the iPad. If they had a trading app, they could make it easier to trade ETFs. Because right now, Charles Schwab is number one. I'm not really sure who number two is. I think it might be E-Trade. Because TD Ameritrade's gone. Scott Trade's long gone. So, uh, I, hey, listen. Uh, why let Charles Schwab have all the fun? But uh, I don't know. That, that could come anytime. I mean... If they did that, I think they would probably uh, increase their valuation by another trillion dollars because all, you know, you have all these, uh, a Apple's built into everything. It's built into schools. It's built into offices. So you'd have more people, people who never expected that they'd even be trading stock. All of a sudden they start trading stock or you have younger people get interested in it because, oh yeah, they don't teach us how to trade stock. They don't teach us how to balance a checkbook. They don't teach us how to maintain our credit. All of a sudden you'd have all of these people who never thought of doing this before suddenly want to do it. And I think that would actually be really cool. One of the things I like about uh, the Apple Card, I like about the savings account, is how it's integrated into iOS. So that means on any of my devices, at the end of the month, when I get paid interest, for example, I get like a notification that tells you, boom, you get a, this is how much interest you get. So you get like a notification, it pops up, it rings, and it says, yes, you got $7 of interest this month. I like that. That's really, really cool. And... You usually don't have any other ecosystem that can do stuff like that. So I really like that. So that is Warren Buffett's third largest dividend payer. And he's making almost $879 million in dividends from Apple. So right there, you have a combined almost $3 billion dollars almost $3 billion worth of dividends. So you yourself are not going to right away be able to do anything even remotely like that, right? So this is Motley Fool's page, and this is what they always say. It's like, oh, should you take $1,000 and invest it right now? Well, that's the question I kind of ask, because see, when I do my investments, I always invest using $1,000 for whatever stock I'm going to buy, especially if it's a brand new stock to my portfolio. And I've been, I've been purchasing stocks since I was like 19 or 20. Um, and the thing about it is, over that time, I built two different portfolios. So um, it used to be three, but I ended up collapsing one. Because uh, the because what it was funny what happened was Scott Trade uh, was bought no 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 Scott Trade yeah Scott Trade was bought and it changed into TD Ameritrade and at that time I had Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade and then TD Ameritrade got bought by Charles Schwab so I ended up with two Charles Schwab accounts but I'd started with three because I had had E Trade at first so. Um, my thinking is, hey, I wouldn't mind having an Apple trading account, but will Apple do it? I don't know. But if they did it, I think they'd make another trillion dollars. They'd add another trillion dollars to the valuation. Apple could be the first $5 trillion company because the analysts are already estimating that they're going to be $4 trillion before 2025. And considering how much money is being pumped into tech stocks, especially for AI with uh, Microsoft, Google, Apple, and NVIDIA, who knows? You know, it, it really could happen. So uh, those banks, oil, and the tech stocks that pay dividends, those are my main focuses in investments right now. Okay, so as you can see, this is uh, one of my Charles Schwab accounts. And as you can see, this is how the market is moving right now. Now, during the summer, they always expect there to be a dip, but they expect whatever dip you have during summer months, they expect those to typically uh, pick up as you move towards the uh, uh, holiday season. Now, the holiday season, you know, obviously uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and whatnot, 
that's when they're expecting most purchases to be made through the year. So uh, this is, again, how the market is moving thus far for the month. And this right here is how the market is moving for the year. So um, as you can see, it's down just for the for last couple of days. But as you can see on the month, it's uh, up. And on the year, it's up plus 2697 for the Dow Jones. But this is how they present the information uh, using uh, Wells, uh, using, uh, what is it called, uh, Charles Schwab, right? Um, now, the watch list that I put together to make it easy for you to see, they have the uh, basic list, which is just the uh, names, and then they have the heat map. And, uh, I, you know, I, I'm trying to get used to using Charles Schwab, but to tell you the God's honest truth, I really liked using TD Ameritrade better. That's that's one of the reasons why I never really talked about Charles Schwab trading. Uh, but they have a lot of stuff that I guess you could say it's good if you're an options trader or if you're a day trader. But me personally, I just put the money in there and I just let it sit. I'm not watching it all the time unless I make these videos. So... Even though these things are in the red, that's only by a very small percent. So if you look at Apple, it's down by 0.48%. So that's nothing to worry about. That's like not even 1%. Microsoft down by 1.13. That's not much. It's it's Just because it's red doesn't necessarily mean that it's a big problem. So as you can see, this heat map is showing you these uh, dividend earners that I've put together. So what we'll do is we'll look at the uh, basic list so it makes it easier to show you. So these are all dividend payers. And these are the major dividend payers that uh, I have. So you got Apple, uh, Microsoft, Santa Fe and Gilead. Those have to do with uh, Biofarm. And then you got General Electric. Now, a lot of people don't really pay much attention to General Electric, but yes, I really do think you should pay attention to General Electric. General Electric makes a lot of different things. They make airplane engines. They make uh, all types of stuff, alternators, uh, batteries. It's like really General Electric. Yeah, that's a, that's a good dividend earner right there. Uh, Nike, as you know, Nike is going to be around probably forever as like the premier sneaker company. Uh, Citigroup is a bank, obviously. JP Morgan's a bank. Capital One's a bank. Wells Fargo, Bank of America. Uh, these are some major dividend payers. You know, I tried to tell you all to get these things during the pandemic. And during the pandemic, had you bought these stocks, you would have paid half what I paid for them. Or, no, I should say you would have paid half what they cost now. You would have paid what I paid for them. I paid half what they cost now. Uh, I've been making so many of these videos. But the sad thing is, these videos really don't get many views because of YouTube's shitty algorithm that puts more focus on crypto gurus and it puts a lot more focus on bullshit. So the thing about it is, you know, I make these videos just because I feel like it, but... These videos really don't get a lot of views, and that's sad because, you know, I've given out some solid advice, but uh, whatever. Logitech is one of my dividend payers. It went from $50 to $100, and then it fell back after the pandemic was over by $40. Not a big deal, but I'm still up on it. EA is Electronic Arts. They make video games, and they seem to purchase smaller companies that make video games. They make more video games. So, yeah, they're worth having, and they pay a dividend. NVIDIA, as you know, NVIDIA is up, 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 thanks to this AI mania. NVIDIA is doing very well. Sirius XM is actually down, but the thing about it is they still continue to pay their dividends. So, hey, uh, Warren Buffett still holds it. You know, uh, Exxon Mobil is an oil company, BP, Sunoco, Chevron. This is what I was telling you. Uh, oil stocks are excellent to hold. Chevron, uh, AT&T, like I believed not in investing into uh, 5G. I believed it's better to just invest in the actual companies that are our main carriers. So you have AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Uh, they all pay dividends, by the way. Then there's Walmart. Walmart is going to be around for a very long time. 
a very good dividend payer. Uh, Visa, MasterCard, uh, American Express. Um, I bought the big oil companies, and then I bought the gas companies, and then I bought automobile companies. So you got Ford, Stellantis, GM. Ford, Stellantis, and GM are basically the largest three companies in America. And uh, let's see, uh, Occidental Petroleum's right there, Valero Energy, Citgo, I believe, is part of Valero, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, so, the, the, you know, these are the gas companies. We've got at least, I would say, 10 years until gasoline companies, because I, I really believe that the gas and oil companies, regardless they're trying to push us into electric vehicles, I really believe gas and oil is going to be around for a long time. And the reason why is because home heating oil is necessary. And solar panels in no way are going to replace home heating oil. In order for them to do that, you would have to have solar panels and you have to have batteries to store the energy. I really don't see that happening anytime soon. Maybe in the next 20 to 50 years, but within the next 10 years, you can still make profit off of oil and gas, especially if you're building up a dividend paying stock. But my thinking is the energy companies aren't stupid. They're going to do everything they can to diversify their portfolio. So they're going to make it so that they purchase uh, alternative energy companies, or they'll make it so that they're a cornerstone of alternative energy. So these really large energy companies, I really, really think they're going to diversify themselves. They're doing it now, but I really think in the future, energy companies are going to be energy companies. Because at the end of the day, the smaller startups in things like solar and wind and everything... They don't have the ability to deploy resources the way the large energy companies do. So I really, really think the large energy companies are going to diversify themselves in a way where they benefit from green energy transitioning. So uh, we'll see. But I, I really, I don't mind betting on them. I really think it makes sense. So yeah, there's Coca-Cola, Warren Buffett's big in Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Newmont. Barrett Gold, uh, Freeport McMoran, Northrop Grumman, General Motors, Intel, and Micron. And Micron, I've been telling you about right now. See, Micron, the, I, I, I really think that we're at like the same moment a couple of years ago where I told you about AMD. AMD was $50. And then all of a sudden, AMD took off and now it's at over $100. Micron is still $60. Um, as far as I can say, because of the fact that Micron is slowly being built up and they're building factories in order to produce semiconductors, uh, semiconductors uh, they're building a factory right now in Troy, New York in order to make uh, Micron semiconductors. I really believe that Micron is going to be big. I don't know how big, but you have to understand America is investing so that they can have control over semiconductor production so that we never have a chip shortage again, not in this country. They're afraid that China's planning to take over Taiwan. That's what they're claiming, whether it's true or not. And because of that, they're forcing investment into semiconductors. Intel is Israeli. Now, I love Intel. I love Intel processors. I think that they're the best. I don't care about how AMD brute forces their way through CPUs. I like Intel. And Intel also pays a dividend. Right now, Intel is very low. So when they're talking about, oh, yeah, well, if you had $1,000, where would you put it? Or if you had $10,000, where would you put it? Well, I believe in diversification. I don't believe in putting all your money in the same place. I believe in spreading it out a little bit. But some people may have different feelings about that. I believe Intel, Micron, uh, NVIDIA is kind of high right now. So it's hard for me to recommend that. See, if you had bought it when I told you to, because I was making videos and saying, yeah, you got to buy into the stock split and this, that, and other. You could have had yourself 100 shares of, of NVIDIA or more. If you had bought in before that stock split, 
But uh, some people, you know, they're busy gambling on cryptocurrency. So anyway, uh, Intel and Micron are must buy. So if you have $1,000 for each, I would definitely own $1,000 in each. Um, as far as banks and oil, I mean, I've already said that. So yeah, that's definitely where it should be. I also like AMD, but the reason why they're, uh, you know, a little shaky on AMD is because AMD is Taiwanese. So they're worried, you know, that, uh, you know, China might try to take over Taiwan. But other than that, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, um, again, their prices have gone up. Since I told you a long time ago to buy, their prices have gone up. So if you get it now, you get them more expensive than what I paid for it. And uh, that is what it is. Now, I understand that some people don't have enough money to just simply just say, yeah, I'm going to take $1,000. I'm going to risk it on a stock. Yeah, I totally understand that. But um, again, this is the reason why you buy dividend payers. Because see, with the dividend payers... If you're able to build yourself up to the point where you have a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars coming in every single year because of the dividend stocks that you own, well, that makes it easier for you to invest because now every single year you're going to collect a certain amount of dividend and you can take that dividend and you can reinvest it. By doing this reinvestment cycle for over five years, ten years, all of a sudden, you build up a portfolio that you never could have imagined that you would have normally had. And uh, that's basically what it is. And if you see the, any sudden dips in the market, like if you see any sudden fear in the market that causes people to pull out, that's usually the best time to start investing. Because when everybody else pulls out, all of a sudden, you're able to get these stocks that used to be more expensive, but you're able to get them on sale because suddenly everybody got scared and pulled out. Like you think about COVID. People got scared and pulled out because they didn't know what was going to happen. The government was telling, oh, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. They pulled their money out. And then you have some schlub like me who's just waiting for you to pull out. And as soon as you pull out, I get in. And I get these oil stocks and I get these, these discounts I never would have gotten before.